In this video, we're going to take a look at set builder notation. And a set is a collection of items, can be words, letters, uh, numbers, and we're specifically going to be looking at numbers here. Our first set is called the natural numbers one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And we have a name for this, we call this set in. And we can identify it with kind of a bold end with a little extra line right here. The integers, these are the natural numbers, including and zero, and uh, the opposite of the natural numbers. We're going to call these the integers, and we're going to call this set Z. And then we have the rational numbers. Now the rational numbers, these include fractions like one half and terminating decimals like 0.25, which we know that is one fourth, and repeating decimals like 0.3 repeating, which we know is one third. Now these are a little more difficult to describe, so we can't list them all in a, a simple list a couple ellipses dot 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 there so we need to use set builder notation and so we're going to write it like this this is our set bracket and we're going to say we have two numbers a over b we've got a little fraction these little this little colon means such that and we're going to give some qualifications here we're going to say a is an element of the integers And B is the element of the, the integers also. So this symbol here, this little rounded looking E, means is an element of or is in. And then we're going to have our set bracket there. All right. So that's how we're going to say the rational numbers. Now the real numbers, real numbers include rational numbers and include the irrational. Irrational numbers are numbers like square root of 2. Pi, Euler's number E, so on and so forth. And um, we have a name for these last couple here. Rational numbers, we're going to call this set Q. The real numbers, we're going to call this set R. Now we're going to use set builder notation to describe a few sets. And we have different types of intervals that we're going to look at. First we're going to look at bounded intervals. And these intervals have boundaries on the top and bottom. Uh, first one here, we want to describe all natural numbers greater than negative 5 and less than or equal to 10. So to start off, let's look at a, a quick graph at what we're looking at here. So numbers greater than negative 5 well here we have negative 5 now we gotta watch out here graph is not the best way to picture this because it's just the natural numbers and so we have negative 5 and then we're gonna have somewhere over here we have 6 negative, well, sorry negative 4 of course we've got negative 4 negative three, so on and so forth. And so we've got all of these and all the way up to, I'm not going to fit them all in there, all the way up to 10. And is 10 included? It's or equal to, so yes, 10 is included. And I might put a little break in this to show I didn't put them all. But these are actually just little dots in between. Set builder notation would look like this. We have the set of all x's such that now we're going to give some qualifications x x is greater than negative 5 and less than or equal to 10 and then we say which type of set it's in. x is an element of we said the natural numbers. Okay. 
And then we have this question, describe all real numbers that make an expression, this expression non-positive. Now be careful, non-positive means negative or zero. So let's start with zero. Now what makes this expression here zero? Well, it's zero if x squared is 16. So that means x has to be 4. And so, let's look at a little graph again. If x is 4, then we get 0. But also if x is negative 4, we get 0, because negative 4 squared is also 16. And 0 somewhere in here. So, 4 and negative 4 will make it non-positive. That will make it 0 specifically. Where will we get positive numbers? Well, I'm sorry, we, we want negative numbers because non-positive. So negative numbers, that means this number is going to be smaller than 16. So something like 1. You plug 1 in here, we're going to have 1 squared minus 16. Well, that's going to be negative 15. So 1 works, 2 works, 3 works, 1.5, all of these ones in between here. And so since 4 and negative 4 work, uh, in previous classes, like in an Algebra 1 class, you might put a solid dot. But right now we're going to put, we're going to change to these square brackets, or we call these hard brackets, kind of a square parenthesis. And then we're going to shade everything in between here like this. So those are all the solutions. The way we write that in set builder notation is we say the set of all x's such that x is between, so it's greater than or equal to negative 4, less than or equal to 4, and then this is all real numbers, so x is an element of the reals. Okay? And there we have it. Those were bounded intervals because they had boundaries on the top and bottom. Now looking at unbounded intervals, these will have one end that doesn't have a boundary. We want to describe all real numbers greater than negative 5. Quick graph again. Well, we have negative 5 somewhere down here. And notice this is not or equal to, just greater than. Well, in this case, we're going to put a round bracket, a round parenthesis. We call that a soft bracket at negative 5. So that soft bracket, or round bracket, and then everything greater than is up here. So this soft bracket is the same idea that in a, a previous class you might have put a, an open circle. But now we're going to do this soft bracket there. And to write this in set builder notation, we have our set bracket. This is a set of all x's such that x is greater than negative 5 or equal to. Oh, sorry, not equal to. And then this is all real numbers, so x is an element of the reals. All right. Now if we switch it up a little bit, let's go less than or equal to. Graph first, just so we can see a picture of it. We got negative 5. I'm going to slide it over here. And it's or equals 2. So we're going to have a hard bracket. And it's less than. So well, let's try this again. So less than. So we're going to have this over here. And we would say this, all set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to negative 5. And again, x is an element of the reals. This includes any real number there. Finally, we have this expression again. And now let's see what makes them positive. And, well, we know that 4 and negative 4 
make them zero, makes this expression zero. And what will make it positive? Well, this number has to be bigger than 16, so x has to be greater than 4. So if x is greater than 4, then we get a positive number. Now, 4 makes it zero, remember. So we don't want to include 4, so we use a soft bracket. Arrow going to the right, going all the way up to infinity. But since we're squaring, the same thing happens for the negative numbers, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, those would all work. And the decimal values over here. So we're going to use a soft bracket and shade it to the left. And so this, once again, is called unbounded intervals because there is no boundary to the right here, no boundary to the left, no boundary, no boundary. These are unbounded intervals.